Well, hello there, creative. Let me walk you through my process on creating a mural. First, let's jump into the materials. I have Artist Loft acrylic paint, which you can find at Michael's. I have my paper palette, my gloves, the towels to clean the paint brushes on, a wall leveler for accuracy, my Sharpie for sketching, masking tape, green frog tape, which is really good, measuring tape, water, paint buckets, large paint brushes, and smaller paint brushes for detail. Next, I'm gonna walk you through the mock-up process, which I use Canva as a template to kind of get an idea of what I want the layout to look like. So my main element, which is the jet, I found online, just remove the background. Then I just searched some of the other solid elements in Canva's library and just kind of played around with it to get the overall layout of what I'm going for. Here I just transferred it to Procreate so that I can add in some images to see what would look fitting for each pillar. Now I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret with scaling. The secret is a good old projector. You can do the old grid method if you want to and be spending the next three days trying to get it right. But baby, let me tell you, this projector will save you ample time. Now, before I define the layout with a Sharpie marker, I'm actually using an oil pastel to do the rough sketch. Here I'm applying the frog tape, which was recommended on Instagram for more precise, clean lines after you peel it away. And from my experience, I could say it was a 10 out of 10. So much better than regular masking tape. So there is a strategic method on how I'm taping this. You wanna start with outlining the foreground first. So that would be my jet. And then overlapping the tape with the base, which would be the circle. And then lastly, finishing it off with the background. This will make more sense once you see the process of me painting the jet first. And then once I peel back that tape, the lines will be crisp. And then I can work on the element that's behind that, which would be the sphere. So just wait, stay tuned. It's gonna come together. Trust the process. Okay, but how could I forget to mention one of the most important things, which would be the tarp paper or a plastic cover to lay on the floor, which right here, I'm just applying some regular masking tape to the edge of the wall or the baseboard, just so that that plastic cover can stay in place while I am creating. All right, y'all, now we're getting to the fun part. Yes, you know what time it is, painting. So I'm studying in my reference picture and I wanna start with the base color of the jet, which is more of a warm gray. And that's why I have the red and the yellow on standby, but we're gonna kind of experiment and mix that perfect gray that I'm going for. I'ma just give it a little splash of red and yellow. Not too much, just a little splash. Now, I didn't have any mixer sticks, so I'm using the back of my paintbrush. Don't judge me. If you wanna spend an extra dollar or two on a mixer stick, hey, do you. But either way, it's gonna get done. So I'm lifting it a bit with some more white. Like I said, we are experimenting here, trying to get that perfect color. Again, the gray will be used as my base, so I can use the black to blend for the shadows and the whites to blend with the highlights. First, I'm starting with my largest flathead brush so I can get the largest range of application with the base color. Next, I'm color blocking in some of the shadows I see from my reference picture with the black. So as you see, I'm blending the black into the gray where dimension starts to form. And the same goes for the highlights. So a lot of the light source is hitting this segment of the jet. 
So I'm just kind of color blocking in some of that white, which will continue to be defined through each building layer. Next, I'm going in with my detail brushes so I can kind of clean up some of those lines and start defining. I prefer to use a filbert style brush that has round edges because it helps me blend as well as define with curved lines at the same time. Ooh, they're round, okay. Anyways, now we're getting back to the good stuff. I am enjoying this satisfaction right now. When I say the lines were crisp, the tape was definitely taping. Very heavy duty, so it got the job done. This is my husband, Senior Master Sergeant, who is very handy. He loves building stuff, so he wasted no time helping your girl get this tape off this wall. I am grateful, because that just saved me an extra 30 minutes. So I have the basic layers of the jet down, which I will be bouncing back to it to add and define and bring it to life. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the base color of the circle. So to get that Air Force blue that I'm going for, I actually added in some jet gray and then blended it with the blue and then bam, it came up with this amazing color. So here I'm going back with my handy dandy filbert brush and just adding some highlight around the jet itself. This is just gonna be a soft glow that will help hone in on the subject matter. Now as that circle base continues to dry, I bounce back like I told y'all and started adding detail to the jet. And oh my goodness, I am loving the process. When I tell you, you gotta trust the process. I know that in between stage be looking real raggedy, but once you start to define and lift and add more shadows and blend more details into place, it comes together chef's kiss. I don't know about y'all, but I do a lot of bouncing around, especially when I get tired of working in one segment of a project of something to this magnitude. Then I bounced my way back up and started to outline the bases patch. So I'm starting off with white because the border is yellow. And if you know anything about applying yellow by itself, it's not going to show up correctly. So you always want to lay a first layer of white, just flat white, and then allow that to dry and then go back in and paint it in with the yellow of choice. I'm gonna let that dry and bounce my way over to these pillars. So I'm applying that jet gray as a silhouette background before I start painting the portraits onto each pillar. So now I'm about to go back in with my projector and start applying each image to each pillar, which I'll be using a white Sharpie to outline every image just to see where my highlights are going and to get a generalized shape of the portrait. Every pillar is outlined and by now I'm basically just wrapping it up, looking at some reference photos and just copying what I see. I don't necessarily perfect portraits. I just like to let it flow. Like hyper realism, that's cool, but I think it takes away from an individualistic style of one's artwork. So I don't stress to get every detail or to make it look exactly like the photo. The more that you do it, the more that you will become familiar and confident in your own style. Okay, so this is where I mess up at. I should just stick to what I know and not listen to anybody else's suggestions. <laughs> and I'm including this just so you can see the recovery of it all. Remember Senior Master Sergeant from earlier, right? He suggested that I use this poly acrylic 
basically top cover that will varnish it and seal it into place. Baby, when I tell you, it bubbled my whole mural. I was not feeling it. Like, it looked like my mural had eczema. I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I was freaking out. And I think a lot of it had to do with the foam textured roller that I was using as to why it dried and set into this like bubble effect going on. But yeah, I was not happy at all. It was like dried bubbles. I thought maybe it would go away, but no. So yeah, stay away from polyacrylic varnish. It's not, mm -mm. It, ain't, it ain't what it is. It is what it ain't. But thank God it wasn't too bad and I was able to restore it. So I'm going to go in with this lowest grade of sandpaper and get rid of that first layer of the polyacrylic. I have to go back and do some touch-ups of whatever gets removed. But after that's all said and done, this is what I normally use, which is a matte finish spray from Krylon. You can also do the liquid form. I don't recommend doing gloss because when the natural light hits it, it's gonna create a glare um, against the mural. So this is my go-to and thankfully, it was able to get rid of that ashiness that appeared on top of the mural. And voila, this is the finished product. I am very proud of myself and shout out to the Holy Spirit for getting me through because without him, I would have not gotten this completed within two weeks. Even though this was a squeeze in my schedule, we made it happen and she is beautiful. This was a complimentary project dedicated to Shaw Air Force Base. So shout out to y'all. I'm honored to say that I've officially left my mark and I hope that you truly enjoyed this walkthrough. Please feel free to share anything that has helped you through your mural process.